Jackie Corsandy. Greg Campbell. First, Paul Tonkinson. I think it's good to live together before you get married, because you find out about each other, don't you? And rows just crop up where you least expect rows. They're just situations in life where you never had a row before. They just come up like you'll be, like you'll be around the house, for instance. You'll be, you'll be making a sandwich. You know, you'll have made many sandwiches before in your life. You know, most of which you'll have, let's be honest, passed without incident. You're, <laughs> you're enjoying yourself. You're interacting with bread. It's got a peaceful quality about it. <laughs> she'll come up and she'll say, "What are you doing?" And you go, "I'm making a sandwich." <laughs> she'll go, "You're making a mess." You go. I'm just making a sound, I'm just making a sound. Well, who's going to tidy that up? <laughs> oh, I'm going to eat the sandwich, so that won't be there. <laughs> <laughs> She's like, but what about the chopping board and the knives and the forks? Making a sandwich on the house, making a sandwich on the house. <laughs> <laughs> You're like, well, I'll do it later. She goes, no, 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 no. <laughs> You'll do it now. No. <laughs> Tidy up as you go along. Who came up with this Nazi philosophy, tidy up as you go along? <laughs> Where did they come from? People tidy up as we go along! <laughs> Any signs of life would be eradicated at source. <laughs> I see crumbs on the work surface. We must tidy up, tidy away the life. <laughs> you can't do it. You try and tidy up. You get into trouble. You might, what's your favourite sandwich? You might, any around the house. What would it be your favourite sandwich? What would it be? <laughs> Tough question, I know. I mean, there's not many... <laughs> there's not many people here. To be honest, it's not that important. Don't need to give it that much thought. It's just like, uh, mm, well, uh, uh, When you say sandwich, I mean... Uh, uh, Japata? Is Japata bread a sandwich? I don't know. Uh, <laughs> fuck it, you, mate. What's your favourite sandwich? What's it? Ham and salad. Go for it. Live the dream. Crazy motherfucker. OK, fine. <laughs> In England. He had time to think, what is your favourite sandwich? Well, I'm, I'm, bacon and cheese? Ooh! Who's looking? Yeah, woo, bacon and cheese. <laughs> yeah. You're making your sandwich around the house. You try to tidy up as you go along. You put your knife in the margin, or a spread of choice. You don't want to get into that. I know I'm in Clapham, could be an Olivier. Um, <laughs> you spread your margin on the bread, okay? Afterwards, what are you left with on the knife? What are you left with? Bit of marge with some crumbs. Am I right? Some crumbs. Don't think she hasn't noticed. <laughs> She's like, oh, this will be very interesting, yeah. <laughs> See what it does with the crummy Margie residue, very interesting. <laughs> fellas, where does it go, that crummy Margie residue? Where does it go? Back in the tub, am I right, fellas? <laughs> Back in the tub. Life short, smooth it over, who's to know? <laughs> She's thinking, I can't believe he's putting it back in the tub. Thing is, that's not the end of the round, is it? You've tidied it as you go along. You're just about to go through to the front room, phase two of the same round. Just about to go through. <laughs> She's like, bah, 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 bah. <laughs> You're not making me one. You're not making me one. <laughs> well, we obviously don't want one. I mean, you've just, you've just seen me make one. You obviously, you... Yeah, but no one's asked me. I mean, no one's actually asked me. <laughs> you know, yeah, but if I asked you, would you want one? Yeah, but like I say, no one's asked. I'm still waiting to be asked, so obviously. <laughs> All right, do you want me to make your sandwich? No. <laughs> it's nice to be asked, isn't it? <laughs> Even that's it, you made your sandwich, you've established she doesn't want one. You're there in the front room, about to bite into your sandwich. What happens? Just about to bite into it. What happens? Just about to... Can I have a bite? <laughs> <laughs> you don't want a sandwich? I know I don't want a sandwich. No, I just want some of yours. <laughs> Some couples never row, do they? They seem like, oh, we never row. We just talk things through, don't we, Peter? We talk things through, don't we, Peter? And then tend to do what I say, don't we, Peter? We, we talk things through and then my way is the best, isn't it? Yeah, yeah, we just talk things through. Then, yeah, yeah. You all seen five years later in a documentary, the blokes are going, I bludgeoned her to death with a hammer. <laughs> she wanted half my sandwich, I just cracked. <laughs> the hammer was at hand. <laughs> Then I chopped her up and I tidied up as I went along, so there we go. <laughs> it's what she would have wanted, so... <laughs> we still have a physical engagement, you'll be pleased to know. It's not as frenzied as it was, we still are in there. We've been together ten years. I mean, I know very early on, for instance, if we're going to have relations or not, have a physical 
kind. We've got code. You get code, don't you? You'll be about tea time and she'll be there just going, I, th I think I'll uh, have an early night tonight. So. <laughs> Do you want to go upstairs? <laughs> <laughs> and I'll be like, well, there's Worthington Cup highlights on about half ten. <laughs> And there's time for a sandwich of my own choosing, that'll be nice. <laughs> Bacon and cheese. <laughs> I love how you drive over here. I could never, ever go back to Canada to live just specifically because of the driving. The, the distance between cars without getting upset at each other is the most amazing experiment in human interaction. It's unbelievable to me. You're 90 miles an hour, 100 miles an hour, up each other's asses. You can't even read the license plate of the car in front of you. Let's go, 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 yeah! Yeah, we might die in a fiery wreck, but we might get home two minutes earlier, too, so let's rock! <laughs> Life's tough. Buy a helmet. Get out of the way! <laughs> you got a middle lane driving crisis in this country, I'll tell you. The number of people, and I wonder what the middle lane is for. I have no idea. I just, I'll be on the phone, I'll read the map, I'll change the radio station. I'm not sure what I'm doing here. You're in the middle lane, get over! <laughs> Let me out of my lane. Yeah, people will actually argue the point with you. Sober, in the middle of the day. No, I just think it's safer there. It's way safer in Sweden, so fuck off there if you like it so much. Get out of the middle lane! Right out loud! You're calm drivers at speed when you're missing each other by inches. Nobody gives a fuck over here. You got great disarming phrases. Whether it's in Scotland, whether it's in England, fucking, I'm nae bothered, pal. It's nae bothered, you know. My favorite is just the English, I'm not bothered, all right, I'm not bothered. I'm like, you're not bothered? What a wonderful thing to be, beautiful. <laughs> Especially when you're just missing each other, going those kind of speeds. In Canada, guys miss each other by 100 feet, they're rolling down the window. What the fuck's going on, asshole? <laughs> hey, watch the paint. <laughs> Give me the binoculars, let's see what kind of dickhead we're dealing with here. <laughs> He's wearing an orange shirt, that's for sure, that's him. I love roundabouts. I don't even know how they work. That's the amazing thing about them. I just do what you do. I go in with speed and confidence. As far as I know, that's all you have to do. Yeah. That's right, you come out the other side alive. You did it correctly, good for you. I think, I think I appreciate roundabouts more than you do because I'm lost all the time. You appreciate roundabouts if you don't know where you're going. Because that's a big thing. If you've ever been on holiday in Canada, if you miss a turn, it could be a year before you get back to it. <laughs> It's insane, you know, you get invited to a party. Hey, nice accent, where are you from? Oh, England, that's neat. Hey, we got a party. Can I see you there? If I can... ah! That's our turn! Ah! Ah! We're gonna be late, shit! Here, you just go to the next roundabout. Let's go back, good thinking, all right? <laughs> we should pick up a bottle of wine or something. Yes, we should, how civilized. You are civilized in a lot of ways. The fact that you're allowed to park facing oncoming traffic over here. I don't even know, I look at your face to see if that registers anything. Does it seem strange to you that you're allowed to cross oncoming traffic and take a parking space away from people who are faced in that direction to begin with? It's the most unbelievable thing for me to comprehend. The first time I saw a guy doing it, I thought he was robbing a bank. I had no idea what was going on. What the hell is that loon up to? Holy shit, let's grab a rock and put it through the stereo, man. Woo! Right on. I think he's just parking, dude. Is he? <laughs> I like that you laugh at harsher subjects over here as well. Canadians are very empathetic people. You can't make fun of anything that's not fluffy bunny or roses, you know? I like peppermint tea, make fun of that. <laughs> I was on a train that hit a pedestrian over here. I don't know if anyone's had that experience. Londoners, come on, who's been on a train that smacked a dude? <laughs> Absolutely. And you know that because they tell you. <laughs> Only in England do they feel the necessity to inform the public there's a dead guy wedged under the train you're standing on. <laughs> It's very strange. It was a very strange event for me because in Canada, not only do we have ambulances now, but we've gone one step further. We've got things called psych psychological response vehicles that are full of like psychiatrists and they show up at the scenes of crimes just to see if you saw something that annoyed you. I'm not kidding, right? Just like, what do you, did something bother you? Did something hurt your feelings? What happened out there? Did you see something? Well, there was just a guy and then there was a hat and I don't know what happened, man. Really? Here's some get out of work free cards. Really? I don't have to work? Hard. It was a wicked experience for me. I wasn't happy that the guy died, but it was really strange to be on a train that, first of all, nobody was making noise. Everybody had that kind of spider sense. They realized, okay, something's up, something weird going on out there, something. Okay, start to deep breathe. And then they came over the loudspeaker. Oh, sorry for the delay, folks, but there's a man under the train. 
Everyone had the same reaction. Fuck, I'm late. <laughs> I don't believe he's going to be more dead. <laughs> Are we invited to the funeral? I don't think so. No. I like that you don't speak unless it's something necessary. That was a weird thing, just to have silence on the train. Everybody knew something was up, but nobody knew what. And there was just waiting for the emergency instructions. Okay, something's happening up there. You never get silent. This is the nice thing, I can do it right now. In a room full of people, you never ever get quiet like that in Canada. You never, there's always some inane conversation in the back. I work in a hat shop. No way, wow, what kind of hats do you sell? So big hats, little hats, all. You gonna shut your fucking hole while we burn to death hat? You can put that on for a second? Shut your mouth for a heartbeat, for Christ's sake. You guys rarely talk at all, unless you're selling fruit. Holy shit. Whoa. You get a box of bananas parked in front of you. I'm in such a good mood tonight, but I have to be, because my name's Shappy. <laughs> Shappy's actually short, it's a nickname. It's actually short for Sharp Haddock, but I changed it to Shappy when I was 12. I got sick of being called Shit Attack. <laughs> Teachers are so cruel. And my mother always used to say to me, but you know, sh she's foreign, but you know, <laughs> Sharp Haddock, it means butterfly in Persian. Oh, I looked it up in a Persian dictionary. It actually means moth. <laughs> These lights are very dangerous to me. <laughs> we'll have to shorten our names. If you have a foreign name, you make it easier for people by shortening them. For example, Sharp Haddock became Shappy. Went to school with a guy called Mir Abdul Baghi. Changed his name to Jim. <laughs> I have a cousin called Mohammed. Changed his name to Don't Shoot! <laughs> So you can tell by looking at me that I'm an ethnic minority. It's obvious, isn't it? Because I'm five foot two with size seven feet, which actually makes me a penguin. <laughs> I, was actually, um, I was actually born in Iran, but I'm, I'm legal. <laughs> Touch me. Um... <laughs> hey, Leah. I sometimes wonder how I would have turned out growing up as a woman in Iran, because in Iran, women aren't allowed. They're just not. Um... <laughs> Unless, unless they're completely covered head to toe, which in some ways would be great. I'd never have to lose weight again. I'm 14 son and you don't know. <laughs> My grandmother thinks she's religious. She's not, she's just fat. But <laughs> just uh, a couple of years ago, we had a massive earthquake in Iran. It was tragic. It flattened an entire city. One happy story came out of the Iranian earthquake. They found a 97-year-old woman alive in a cupboard under the rubble after 19 days. I read that story. My heart burst with pride at the quality of Iranian cupboards. Right. <laughs> but then I... I read on, and it turned out she wasn't under the rubble all that time at all. She'd just gone out of Narnia. <laughs> The other night I met this guy, he was half Iranian, half Chinese, so he really wanted to grow a beard, but couldn't. <laughs> Iranians are natural conspiracy theorists. The, uh, the summer Diana died, my father rang me and he goes, I can't believe she's cavorting with that Arab and they haven't killed her yet. Two weeks later, Diana was dead. You thinking what I'm thinking? My dad did it. <laughs> People like my, Iranians like of my dad's generation, we blame everything on Israel. We've run out of milk, Israel is behind it. <laughs> I have an Israeli friend, bless her heart. Whenever she comes to visit us in the UK at passport control, they go, occupation? She goes, no, just a holiday. <laughs> regard as typical Iranian parents. I actually asked my parents if they'd arrange a marriage for me. My parents didn't have an arranged marriage. They had a deranged marriage, but that's an entirely different story. But they were like, oh, get down the pub like everyone else. So I had to find a man by myself and I went speed dating. Now the thing is, I went to an Asian speed dating night where the parents went along and spent three minutes talking <laughs> to other parents. I didn't find a man, but I did get a few samosa recipes, you know. <laughs> I have to find a man, I have to find a man because I'm, I'm at that age, I'm starting to get really broody and I keep thinking I've got to have a baby now while my mother's still young enough to look after them for me. 
Because, you see, kids look really easy to look after, but they're not. You have to feed them. <laughs> sometimes twice a day. <laughs> and women of my generation were having babies later and later in life. I'm going to be on my Zimmer frame going, I want to have a baby one day. I'm going to be very posh when I'm old. But I want to live a little first. I want to travel, go to India to find myself. People always go to India to find themselves. Where do Indian people go? Ooh, England, yay! <laughs> I'm going... Actually, I'm going on holiday to India next month and I wanted to know what the weather was going to be like, so I phoned my bank. <laughs> I have to be honest, uh, I almost didn't make it here for this show because uh, <clears throat> my wife and I are currently going through a rather uh, painful and bitter divorce. And the worst part about it is that we have a little six-year-old daughter, uh, Megan, and she doesn't quite understand uh, why her mommy's not around as much anymore. So I wrote her a little lullaby. And if, you, if you'll just indulge me for a moment, I'd like to play you the song I wrote uh, for my little girl. Daddy is here and he'll sing you a soft lullaby tonight. Why can't it all be like it was before? How can I explain why mommy's not here anymore? Cause daddy likes porno dollar whores Daddy gets wasted and robs liquor stores Daddy likes rubbing against little boys on the bus I think that's why your mommy left us Mom Hush, little girl There is no reason to fret tonight don't mind the smoke daddy just wants to forget tonight <laughs> soon it will all be like it was before any minute she will walk through that front door But daddy bets horses and drinks lots of beer Then he wants sex that involves mommy's rear <laughs> Daddy has sores on his naughty parts oozing with pus I think that's why your mommy left her home from the bar he visits his bookie and steals a new car he'll drive to the strip club and if daddy plays his cards right he'll bring home your new mommy tonight la di da la di da I went to see my grandfather <clears throat> the other day because he took ill and he was in the hospital. And uh, it was really hard. I walked into his room and he was lying there in the bed with all the, you know, the two IVs and the tubes. And it was really depressing. I thought to myself, this is my grandfather. You know, he's been there for me my entire life. What would I do if he weren't there for me anymore? So I ran home and I grabbed my guitar and uh, this is what I came up with. When grandfather dies, life will be strange. When grandfather dies, my whole world will change. When grandfather dies, I'll scream and I'll yell. Cause I'll be fucking rich as hell. So grandfather die, don't keep me in suspense. So grandfather cough up that inheritance. So grandfather don't hold on 
another day. I love you to death, but I got bills to pay. <laughs> a stroke would be nice, disease would be cool. I'll scatter his ashes in my new swimming pool. <laughs> I'll jam with the stones, I'll dine with the queen. Now what say we unplug that machine? <laughs> oh, grandfather die before the fiscal year. Oh, grandfather I wish Kevorkian were here. Oh, grandfather fly, just take your final bow. Grandfather die, family hates you anyhow. For God's sakes, you must be as old as the sun. Your social security number is one. You're deaf, dumb, and blind, and an amputee. You donate your blood every time that you pee. Your arthritis acts up whenever it rains. You're so old, your penis has varicose veins. Oh, why don't you die, Grandpa? It's all over now, my granddad is dead. A mysterious blow to his wrinkled old head. Before I collect a small oversight, but everything should work out all right. I'll start working on my grandma tonight. Thank you.